Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Lee and in today's video I'm going to be teaching you how to master the Imola circuit and how you can maximize all the nuanced details around this magnificent historic racing track that is steeped in Formula 1 and motorsport history as well. So, the first point that I'm going to be talking about in today's video is actually going to be the curbing styles and why Imola has such a unique curbing and how you can maximize it. With that being said, let's hit the track. So now you can see that we're on the track here and we're at the final complex of corners going into the second glass and the final corner on the Imola track as well. And you can see we are in the nose camera of the car. And what you see with the Imola curbing is of course it's painted in the iconic green, white and red uh, paint as well. Of course going along with the Italian flag, very beautiful in my opinion. Um, but you see, it's not a traditional curbing, that the green and the red have the same amount of height, and the white is actually the highest part of the curve. Traditionally, within motorsport circuits, and what you see around pretty much every other track around the world, is the lowest part of the curve is closest to the track, and the further away you get from the track, the harsher and higher the curbing goes as a result. But, you can see around the Imola track, it plays out time and time again, that the inside of the curb is the same height as the outside of the curb and the maximum height of the curb is often met in the middle of the concrete slab effectively. So your point of reference for Imola is actually trying to get your tyre to the white part of the curb and not the red. And it's quite easy to be misled and misunderstood in this situation and assume that the inside of the curb is what you should be aiming for. Again, there's a bit of a difference though, as on exit curbs here on the second to last corner, you can see the curb is a more traditional way that when you're closer to the track, i.e. the green section of the curb, it has less aggressiveness and is less tall. When you go over to the red side, you can see even by the camera marginally, it will go over to uh, a different camera as well. You can see the car is visibly being shaken around. And then as with most other racing tracks in the world as well. When you go to the exit of the corner, uh, you have quite a lot of these really tough, triangular shapes that make a really aggressive vibration to the racing car. You can see, even just driving over this at, how fast am I going? I'm going four miles an hour, and you can just see how aggressive this is already to the car. What I'm gonna do now is quickly show you a traditional curve on let's say Silverstone, and you can get an idea of how different Imola is because of this. So now you can see we are at Silverstone on the final complex of corners as well, and you're gonna see how more, this is a traditional curbing style, that on the inside of the curb closer to the track, it's basically nothing. There's no aggressiveness, there's no bump, there's no height change realistically by just putting a little bit of your tire over the inside. But as you go closer to the inside Sasha curb or further away from the track, you can say it, the curb gets more and more and more aggressive until you have a Sasha curb on the inside, but of course depends a lot on the corner. And when you go to the exit curb here in Silverstone, it's identical to the exit curb on Imola as well, that you have the curb increasing in its height and aggressiveness as you go further away from the track, and you are met with the triangular bumps that are very aggressive on the exit as well. You can see just driving over them now. So this is why Imola can be very difficult to master for a lot of people and difficult to get the brain functionality around the curbs, to be honest. Because when you go to somewhere like Silverstone, it's a very traditional track with very traditional curvings. Here at Turn 1 as well, you can see the curve gets more and more aggressive the further you go on it. And the same style here in Turn 1 on the inside and on the outside of the circuit as well. Whereas when we go back over to Imola, you see that the curving is basically unique. And I don't really see this curving style anywhere else in the world. Even in Italy, I don't see this curving style. So now you can see us back on Imola and you'll be able to definitively see the points that I've been making about the inside curbing. So we're just going to go over it one final time and then we'll move on to the next section, risk versus reward around this fantastic track. So you can see, as I said, the white part of the curb is the highest part and that's what you should be aiming your tyre towards, if anything, to be honest. Um, and going towards the red is just a bit of a disaster as the car will be bottoming out as I can show you here. If I go to the white part of the curbing then that means that only the tyre is on the curbing surface and the suspension is not going to be risking um, 
allowing the floor to hit the curbing and you can see like this we are literally with the white part of the curbing just about avoiding the floor touching the curb and able to run around the corner in a really stable way um whereas if we quickly put it in reverse and go over the red part of the curb when you can see we're on the red the good indication if you can see the light on the back of the car at the very bottom of the screen uh normally where the rain light is activated in the rain or can be flashing with low battery deployment in the f1 game um you can see it like i say at the very bottom of the screen this is a great indication for you if your car can be bottoming out on a curb if you see that the rain light is hanging over the curb this is a really good indication that the bottom of the car i.e the floor as you can see right now can be touching the curb as well you can see from these angles it is extremely extremely close to touching the curb and of course driving at speed will only increase that risk the reason it's bad to have your car touching the curb like it might be doing in this situation is quite simply the ground effect for the modern formula one cars are so sensitive so aggressive so dynamic that quite simply that if you bottom out the car you're going to be losing I'm going to guesstimate here because I don't know the exact number, but you're going to be losing, let's say, 30% of your grip, like a click of a finger, because the airflow will be stalled underneath the car, and that means that you'll have 30% less grip, and this is why you have snap oversteer and unpredictability when driving over the curbs here at Imola, in addition to the fact that the curbs are very aggressive here as well. But the main cause of having massive snap of oversteer and spinning out on Imola, with using the curbs that is, is mainly because the bottom of the car touches the curb and stalls the airflow leading to a loss of grip and that loss of grip is extremely sudden and extremely difficult to control. The next segment I'm going to be talking about is going to be the risk versus reward. Imola has famous in my opinion for its flowing corners one into another. So you can see coming here at the end of the first sector split here at Imola Circuit you have this corner that goes fast left, fast right as well. And you effectively could carry loads of speed for the first left-hander, but you'll end up on the inside of the circuit. Um, what would mean the second right-hander is too tight. Whereas if we put the car quickly into reverse, bit of, bit of grass cutting on the way back. There we go, lovely jubbly. Um, but if you put the car into reverse and now you look at the corner from the same angle, but if we compromise the first apex completely, you'll have a much more open ability to hit the second apex as well, leading to a better exit for this minor straight. The ideal compromise is actually carrying the ideal speed between the two corners, as I need to back it up a little bit, there we go. Um, but carrying the ideal speed between the two corners, what often means being placed in the middle of the track to give a good advantage to the first apex and the second apex alike. Of course, this is extremely difficult to do and extremely precise while traveling at like 200 miles an hour as well. But you see a lot of times in real Formula One, in league racing, any racing around Imola as well, often the fastest people around the track are the people who know how to make the compromises from one corner to the next the best way possible. Another example of this can be Aquamino Lali, but we'll get onto that after this example. I'm going to be driving the sequence, uh, what I just showed you, at a high speed as well, so I can show you what it looks like. And you can see now coming up to the sequence, and what I'm going to try and do is compromise the first apex enough that I have enough room to sell up the second apex like that, and I was able to carry great speed through the corner and allowing myself to open up the second apex in a really good manner. So now I'll show you what not to do in two examples, and that's to not compromise the second, uh, not to compromise the first apex. And you can see we go fast with the first, but then the corner is super tight for the second apex, leading to a huge loss of speed. And the exact opposite of this is by compromising too much of the first apex, and now opening up the second apex by too much. Although the second apex now has a faster total speed, the overall combined speed between the two apexes is lower, and this is why doing a compromise in the middle of the road is necessary to get the maximum extraction of lap time out of all of the scenarios on this track. So one more time, you're going to see me compromise both corners in an adequate manner to carry maximum speed through the, through the complex, like I do just there, and allowing myself to be on the exit in a very good speed. 
Like I alluded to earlier, another example of this is going to be Aqua Minerari, and quite simply because it's such a difficult corner that carrying amazing entry speed and slowing the car down extremely hard to an uphill traction zone is really difficult. So you can see, just about flat out, hit the second apex and now driving up the hill. So let's go into replay camera and break down why the risk versus reward here is so important and why it's so vital towards lap time. So you can see now, coming up into the section, first of all, we open up the track as much as possible. You don't really want to be touching that ring gully on the outside as it can be quite dirty and giving less grip. So you can see, as I talked about earlier, I do not put my car any further than the white part of the curb as that is the maximum height of the curb and going to the red part of the curb can lead to the car bottoming out and this is why i'm taking this line so you can see i minimize the distance as much as possible take the white part of the curb and now already i'm thinking about slowing the car down as much as possible while using the maximum track width possible as well you can see without going on the aggressive triangular shapes on the outside of the curbing because that will cause the car to be unstable and possibly lock up and lose control so while staying to the flatter part of the exit curb like i talked about earlier um, i'm able to keep the car under control and then sweep into the corner in one fluid motion allowing myself to come directly towards the apex curb of the white just grazing it what means the racing line was pretty ideal throughout this corner Quite simply because how tight the exit curb here and the exit of the Akraminolali corner is, you do really want to run over the exit curbing, but it can cause the car to be unstable. As you can see, as we come back over the curbing, the car does a bit of a hip skip and a bump, and it allows to come back on the road. And you watch my steering wheel as we're coming back to the main part of the tarmac. You can see it jiggles a little bit just from the force of going over the exit curbing. Once again, I'm going to show you a little example of what not to do, basically, um, and why over-compromising a corner on Akminolali and Imolo in general can be disastrous for lap time. So, I'm going to go too slow here, think about setting up the exit too much, and although this looks very clean, ultimately it makes a situation that it's much slower than the first example, whereas the first example, and we'll try to repeat a correct Akminolali, for you right now is much more flowing precise and dynamic and that's what you need to be doing so breaking down into the gears nicely done and you can see this is where the risk and reward is so critical around this similar track to make sure that you're carrying adequate entry speed to keep up the minimum speed to keep up the uh floor diffuser every bit of downforce because of course in a formula one car the faster you travel the better the airflow is so the more minimum speed you can carry into these corners without unsettling the balance of the car the better grip that you'll have at your disposal to go faster so now i'm going to be giving you a definitive broken down guide on how you can attack the track in general here in imola at the end of the lap as well i'm going to be doing a quick explanation on tire deg here and how how you can manage your tires especially the rear axle as it can be very difficult so turn one is very difficult here in imola you'll be breaking at the 100 meter board and the reason it's difficult is quite simply you're coming off a curved straight into a straight line braking zone so you can have two choices you can either risk a lot and open up the track all the way to the outside and accept the car is going to be a little bit unstable because of the curbing or you can take the slightly more safe approach and keep the car straighter without using the outside curbing. Of course, if you go to the outside, it will be about half a tenth, a tenth faster, but at your own risk, be it. Aim for the white part of the curb, set up your compromises correctly, so this will be almost just about flat out. The target of this right-hander is to get it as flat out as possible. It won't quite be flat out, um, but the less you can lift through that corner, the better. Flat out for the left hander though, and coming up to the chicane, as I talked about earlier, set up your compromises correctly to not lose time overall during this whole complex. So aim for the white part of the curb, keep the car to the middle of the road, through the right hander, and on the way on the exit, use up all the road possible. Over to the right hand side, 50 meter board, down the gears into third gear, through the left hander. Because this is an uphill corner, as I'm just going to quickly show you, 
it's quite tight but as you're going up the hill now you can see in the camera it does more exaggeration to the hill the lower you sit in the camera position the more you can see the undulations of the track the higher that you go the less you see the undulations quite simply just because of perception when you go into the third person camera this looks basically flat to be honest um, but when you go into the nose camera of the car, you can see a lot more of the hill and how much of a roller coaster this track can be. So as I was saying, third gear, and you'll be setting up the exit as much as possible because this is uphill. You have a lot more traction than you would once anticipate as quite simply uh, when you're traveling uphill. You have more grip as the gravity forces the springs together into the road and compress the tire, what means you get more grip. When you're going downhill, in fact, the gravity works against you, so uncompresses the springs and the tires of to the well, ties to the contact of the road. And this is why when you go uphill, you have better grip, and when you're going downhill, you have less grip. Simply because of compression and uncompression of the springs with the gravity working with you or against you. Rising up over a blind crest into the fast left hander, you'll be braking at the 50 meter board and again aiming for the white part of the curb and using up all the curb on the exit. The curb is very aggressive here on the exit but because you're traveling at such a high speed you can get away with it effectively. As the mechanical grip that will be unsettled by using the curb is overpowered by the downforce generated by going faster throughout the corner and using up the extra track whip. Coming up to Aqua Minerale using up all the road as possible but again do not use that drainage on the left hand side as that will cause you a less grip efficiency for your car. Again aim for the white part of the curb as it's the highest part of the curb and do not aim for the red part on the inside and do not go over to the yellow triangular parts of the yellow and well the green and white parts of the curb on the outside but maximum go up to the red part of the curb as this is already aggressive and unsettling the car but you can just about get away with it aim for the white part of the curb once more and use up all the road over the top of the hill but be careful as there is a small trick here that can catch a lot of people out because the curb is so bending over to the right then over to the left Effectively, if I travelled in a straight line from here, I would be off the track and my lap would be invalidated. So you have to take this into account when you're exiting the corner that effectively your track limit warning is here and you want to be pointing effectively to that, that uh, to the Aramco boarding for the uh, pillar that's holding up the advertising. That's a great place to be aiming for and once you come over the crest then you can start pointing your car over to the left hand side once more. Now coming over the curb here and one of the most difficult sections on the whole track purely because it's so inconsistent and difficult to master with a heavily sprung or stiffly sprung Formula 1 car I should say. Using the curb on the outside as much as you can get away with then ultimately turning the car in as late as possible and you'll be looking to use up the maximum amount of this yellow curbing on the inside as well. You can see it literally lifts the front left off the, off the ground as you can see when I'm entering the curb it does not even touch the ground anymore and you can see the front wheel is actually levitating and this will happen generally with the tyres as well. So the yellow curb is so heavy and so aggressive that you really want to watch out that you don't unsettle your car going over this curbing, but ultimately it's so necessary to do because it produces a better lap time by traveling less distance. So the key here is going over the yellow curbing without going over the white line on the outside. You can see with this line, uh, my, my tire is just about staying in contact as well. The same story with the second curve, you want to be using up as much curving as possible without going over the white line. So the more curve you can get away with here, the better and faster you'll be. On the exit, using up all the curve as well, and that'll be leading you off onto the final sequence of corners here in Imola. And now the final corner, blackboard on the right hand side, don't use the curbing on the outside, and this will be leading you into the second to last corner. Use the white part of the curb on the inside for maximum efficiency. You've got all the road on the outside, even right up against the white line. Even though it's extremely bumpy, the track width and ability to open up the next corner, your gain will be so much more rewarding than worrying about the mechanical balance being upset 
by using the curbing. Again, can be risky, but risky can also be fast. Using up all the road and your turning point basically wants to be as late as possible and using up as much millimeter of track entering this final corner as possible, running up to the white and now on the exit once again using up all the road. And now I'm going to be taking you for more full speed demonstration of the lap and after that like I say talking a little bit about the tire, uh, tire scrub and how you can maximize it for your tire efficiency in a racing situation. So 100 meter board, aim for the white part of the curb, lovely. Aim for the white, compromise the exit, lovely jubbly. Again, compromising as much as possible for the chicane, the best possible outcome. Aim for the white, middle of the track, aim for the white, and using up all the road on the exit. 50 meter board, down the gears, in the third, let the car rotate, going up the hill, slam the throttle, use the traction, that will be gifted to you by going uphill with the gravity. 50 meter board, down two gears, again, into the white part of the curb, all the road on the exit, after Minalali coming up right now, down the gears, maximum efficiency, aim for the white, and now over the hill, aim for the bollard on the right hand side, like I talked about earlier, use the curb on the left, minimum distance for the chicane possible, without unsettling the car too heavily on the yellow part of the curb, that was quite nice through there with the efficiency, going up to the second to last corner on the track, Marker board on the right hand side is the black board and black LED through the final complex of corners, open up the corner as much as possible and this is a lap here in Imola Circuit. Which can give you a full description. And now we're going to be briefly talking about the tyre scrub and how you can help your tyres last longer in a racing situation here at Imola. So through turn 1 and turn 2, how you can manage the rear tyre slip is by quite simply managing not to get the wheel spin. It sounds so obvious, it sounds so simple, but it's so difficult to do in highly loaded corners that you can minimize the wheel spin and ultimately sacrifice half a tenth a tenth per corner, but you'll gain more than that back with better tire efficiency. But the main area that you can be gaining tire life here on Imola is corners just like this and corners like Acromino Valley. Because quite simply, the, the more worn and the less grip you have during the stint, the more you want to compromise this first apex of the corner and setting up the second apex. The more grip you have, i.e. qualifying, the faster you can go in and lean on the tire to be scrubbed and pulled across the surface. The less grip you have, the more you want to compromise the entries to the corner and allowing your tire to not be pulled and scrubbed across the surface. Effectively, Think of tire wear like when you had your rubber and a piece of paper in school. When you would rub your piece of rubber over the, over the paper in school, you would see shards of rubber being peeled away from the surface and you would have to blow them away from the, uh, from the paper on your book in school. That is basically exactly what is happening with the tires and the concrete and the surface of the road within a sim within a real life as well. So effectively think of it like that. The less you scrub that the tire across the surface of the road, the better of the efficiency that you'll have for your tire wear over a stint as well. And with that, hopefully you've helped this. Uh, hopefully you found this video helpful. And my name has been Brendan Lee. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be doing plenty more of this content towards the end of F123 and starting F124 as well, including iRacing, the set of course, every simulator game as well. Rensport, I'm going to be playing for the first time pretty soon as well and doing a video about that. So I'm really pushing hard on the content now. I really want to be uploading basically every single day. Um, so yeah, I really want to maximize this summer. I want to maximize this off season from F1 Esports and grow this channel, grow this community. So every like, every comment, every bit of support really means the world to me. And I'll catch you in the next video. Grazie, Vazanti. Ciao, ciao. Bye, bye.